In this video, we will talk about student planners and why they are important. I'll show you inside the planners I designed for ourselves this year, and we will also talk about how I plan my homeschool year in 10 simple steps. So let's get to it. Hi, I'm Laura from monkeymom.com with reviews and tips for homeschoolers. If you're new, please consider subscribing and turn the notifications on to see when I post new content. I really appreciate each and every one of my subscribers and your support keeps me going and this channel running, so thank you. This video is part of a full blog post that you can find linked in the description below. Of course, all other products I will be talking about in this video will be there as well. Student planners or academic planners are planners made specifically for the student. These planners have a weekly space for each subject and their respective assignments. A student planner also starts the year in August or September, following the school year. So let's see how a student planner can help students become more organized focused and less anxious. Time management. We all know most kids, okay, maybe even adults, struggle with this aspect. You can easily get sucked into less important tasks throughout the day. Whether kids will end up going to college or they will find a job, getting them used to manage their time is an important skill, one that they can carry around for life. Productivity. Obviously, with better time management skills comes increased productivity. A student planner can help with that because kids can now see that if they move through their checklist and work efficiently, increasing their productivity, they have more free time in a day. And soon, this becomes a habit. Organized. Organized people are more efficient. Because everything is spread out before them in an organized fashion, they are better at finding shortcuts and prioritizing. Independence and responsibility. An organized student is a more independent and responsible student. Because now they clearly know what is expected of them every day, they can start taking ownership of their education and of their time. Anxiety relief. I feel that having all your tasks lined up helps take them out of your head and onto a medium where they will stay until they get done. Since I couldn't find something I liked through and through, I've spent a good chunk of my summer researching and designing a student planner to fit our needs as homeschoolers. And after working tirelessly to get it published, it's finally available worldwide through Amazon. You'll find the link down in the description. So I created three color designs, jungle, moon, and peony and two black and white designs, cats and dogs. They all have a similar layout and they are all coordinated inside. I also decided to extend these student planners' lives and created for each of the above designs an undated version. This means that these planners have no date written in anywhere, but they can be personalized to fit your needs. You can either write the dates in yourself or you can print the free planner stickers from my resource library, also linked in the description. So how can you tell them apart? I decided to make their covers slightly different. The dated planners all have a rectangle on the cover while the undated ones have a circle. The dated planners also have the year written on the cover while the undated ones don't. So all these planners are 8.5 by 10 inches, a size that can easily fit smaller hands while still keeping enough space for jotting down daily tasks. They cover 14 months so parents have extra flexibility when starting and ending their school year. I also created three stickers to match the planners because Amazon won't offer me the option of stickers or tabs. All in all, there are 10 options and 5 designs, so they are accessible to more people. Let me flip the camera over so we can have a look inside and see the sections of the planners. The cover of this planner is silky smooth paperback. I wish I could show you just how nice this feels to the touch and I feel Amazon did a great job at printing these. The planner begins with a name page and in this particular design you can personalize it by coloring it. For peonies and jungle, 
the pages will be full color. Next, we have a quote page. I chose this quote because I felt it was inspiring and encouraging. I want to be all I am capable of becoming. We are implementing the growth mindset in our homeschool, so this was a great way to have my son reminded of his potential. All planners have the same quote and it's the only quote you will find in these planners. I didn't want to overwhelm kids, so I kept it simple. So the next page is the daily schedule, your old fashioned school schedule where you can decide at a glance what subject goes into what slot each day. I decided to go with block scheduling this year, but these can adapt to any kind of schedule. Next, we have school year at a glance, a two page spread offering a full calendar overview over the whole 14 months. I chose to print this whole planner in a single easy to read sans serif font. As you can see, the numbers are big enough for kids to read and this page is great for keeping track of attendance or just a countdown to the school deadlines. The following section covers the school year details and this is where you can mark how many weeks or months of school you are planning to do and even split your main subjects into chunks to be covered each semester. I created three rectangles where you can write the start, mid and end dates for your semester or year. The space underneath is left up to you. You can use this any way you want. I will grab our planner and show you how we use this in a moment because we inevitably end up with an online resource or two and I want my son to be able to use his educational resources even when I'm busy. I created the online resources. This is a full page where you can list the online classes or websites that kids will use for the year with their respective passwords and usernames. The next spread is something I created for ourselves. I called it planning resources. It's a two page spread with enough space to plan six subjects per page. This is where you will add your chosen resources and details about these, including how many tests, each of these has and what grades they cover, for example. These columns are for writing your subjects. Then you can use the small columns to write the grade of each resource, number of tests, how many units or chapters they have, and so on. I will show you what ours looks like in a moment. Next, we have the start of the planner itself. Each month starts with a two-page spread monthly cover followed by a two-page spread monthly calendar. This is where kids can see upcoming appointments, recurring classes, and other important events. I left enough space for little hands to write things in themselves, and I even created special stickers for kids to use, which I will tell you about in a moment. On the left hand side, I left a small section for notes. You can use this to write reminders for your kids or just leave it blank. You will see I kept the same design all through the planner, making this less boring for kids. The weekly plan is the main component of this planner. Each week spread starts on Monday and it's split into five sections for the five main subjects. Each subject is then split into four more sections. For added flexibility, you can further split these pages to suit your needs. I chose to add little checkboxes for every line, that way kids can easily keep track of what they completed. You see, there's a blank space at the end of this month. That's because August ends on Wednesday this year. Let me go over to September and you will see the month of September starts on a Thursday. So we have the same blank space on the other half of the spread. I felt this was easier for kids than just seamlessly going from month to month. This space can be used for anything from doodling to keeping notes or reminders. The undated planners don't have these spaces, obviously. Let me grab one quickly and show you. So in the undated planners, you get five weeks every month and you can organize these seamlessly.
At the back of the planners, we have a reading log. It spreads on two pages, allowing kids to log their reading for the year. This is followed by two pages of notes for anything else you want to jot down. Let's quickly discuss an undated planner and then I will show you ours and how we used it. Undated planners are very similar. They still cover 14 months, but there is no monthly name and any date. You can either fill these in yourself or you can go to my resource library to download stickers with dates and monthly names to populate these in any way you need to. Now I want to show you how we filled in our planner. For the schedule, I decided to try block scheduling this year, but I ended up with a more traditional schedule. Maybe I'm over planning it. Anyway, this helped me decide on an order for this subject and how to alternate them. On the next page, I used round washi tape stickers clearly mark the start, middle and end dates for our school year. This way, my son can clearly see when things are due. We are using this spread as a countdown since we aren't required to keep an attendance log. But you can use markers to mark the days you did school and the days you didn't. For the school year details, I wrote our start, mid and end dates in the rectangles above and I decided to use this space to split my main curriculum into chunks. I marked the total number of weeks and how many weeks each semester has. Then, for each subject, I calculated how many lessons per week we need to cover to be done in this amount of time. The next page is for our online resources. For the planning resources page, I chose our main subjects and added the components, then the resources or textbooks, the grades they cover, the units or chapters they have, and the number or format of the tests. For example, for math, we will be covering Algebra 1 and 6th grade math. 6th grade math has a star because it's an extra for us. You can see we will be working with Mr. D Math Algebra 1 and Math in Focus Course 1. For each of these, I wrote the respective grades 9 and 6th. The units they cover 12, 14 and the tests we will be submitting. For Mr. D Algebra, we will have a PDF to submit to our school and for 6th grade math, we won't submit anything because it's an extra. My son chose to personalize his planner by using glitter pens to color the moons and stars. Our monthly spread looks like this. In the notes section, I wrote down things to remember or important things. I jotted down his recurring appointments like math and grammar classes, dentist appointments and even birthdays. You can use any stickers to make this easier to spot or Print the stickers I created for this. I was telling you these are flexible planners, so you can see it here for a weekly spread. We have enough space to write every resource we will be using and you can tweak this to your needs. I chose to use Saturday and Sundays as note places. You can either split them with washi tape or use post-its. So this is pretty much it. Let's talk about how I actually plan our homeschool year next. I know many of you have asked how exactly I plan my homeschool year, so I will do my best to explain it. Number one, choose your curriculum. Before starting a plan, you have to know what you will be working from. Our sixth grade curriculum choices and how I made them will come soon, so I will save that for later. 
I write my whole list of curriculum, even the extras, in my learning plan, in the planning resources sections. This offers me a nice overview of everything, how many lessons each book has and whether or not we have to send in tests and how many. This is a great way of keeping track of what you're working from. Number two, start at a macro level. I always like to take a step back and look at my whole year first. So this involves several steps. I know I want to cover these materials in this amount of time. For us, our school, Bridgeway Academy, offers us 40 weeks of school. So 40 weeks is my whole school year. I then split those 40 weeks in half, getting the length of our semester, which is 20 weeks. I take my books and browse the contents. I see the number of lessons or chapters and I split those in half. This way I know that by the end of semester one, I have to finish lesson 15 out of 30, for example. If you need to, you can even have have a mid-semester date and split those 15 lessons again so you will have an even better idea of where you should be. Next, you just take each book and roughly split the 15 lessons into 20 weeks, which is one semester. That gives me a rough estimate of about one lesson per week. I like to keep all these on my school year details page of my learning plan. This way I can always look back and see how much of each subject needs to be done on a weekly basis. Schedule. I like starting the micro planning by establishing a weekly schedule. When will every subject fit into a week? I start by adding the priority subjects, math and language arts. These will always be done in the first half of the day. This year, I opted for a block schedule, kind of, because it degenerated into a classic schedule in the end. So far, it's working great, because we don't feel the pressure of finishing a subject in a limited time. For example, the math time is in core one, from 10 to 11 a.m. My son is usually done with math in 30 minutes and this schedule either allows him for free time or more math. Some subjects can even take up to two hours of blocks of time. It's up to you how you split your day. We don't follow this schedule to a T every day, but it's a nice way to establish some order. Alternate. When scheduling, I also decide what subjects to alternate. I look at the number of lessons we need to do each week, then at the block of time scheduled for that subject. For example, I know that language arts has a lot of components for us. We work separately from multiple sources and it would be impossible to fit all of the language arts in one block of time or in one day. That's why I alternate. Mondays we do grammar and writing, Tuesdays we do literature and vocabulary and so on until the week ends. The way I pair them and how many days they get depends on how long it takes for my son to finish a lesson and how meaty they are. Grammar and writing have the most material to cover so they get three days a week. But while one grammar lesson takes about 10 to 15 minutes, writing can take up to one hour. That's why they go well together for us. I also alternate the electives because we chose three this year and I don't really have a deadline for them. So my son is just doing them as he goes, one every day. Weekly as we go. I learned to hold my horses when it comes to micro planning. I did try to plan all the lessons at once, having dates assigned to every lesson, but the truth is it never happens according to plan. And I always end up ditching the whole thing because it causes too much frustration. My secret now is that I only plan as we go, shifting things around. I never plan more than one or two weeks at once because I know we inevitably have days off. So at the end of each week, I take my learning plan and see what lessons of that past week aren't checked off to move them to the new week. Priorities. The greatest piece of advice that I can give you when planning is to establish your priorities and consult them again and again. What's the most important subject for you? If it's math and language arts, those take precedence over all others. And I consider my day done if it's been a bad day and we just managed to do that much. Electives come last for us. That means these will get cut off the list first if we need extra time or we can't keep up. Monthly spreads. I use the monthly spreads to write down recurring classes that aren't in our main planning. 
dentist appointments, birthdays, holidays, or big test days. Notes. I would have liked to be able to add a note section for every page, but the limited space didn't allow me to. Each month does have a note section where you can write important reminders, but for the weekly spread, I found the perfect solution. We use post-its stuck over Saturday and Sunday. They are easy to move around and great to write down ideas as you go throughout your week. We use it to write down words to research, ideas to explore, and reminders for the next week. Be flexible. Other advice when it comes to planning is to be flexible. Things will not always happen as you planned. Sometimes you're done with your day in half the time it takes on others. Sometimes you will get nothing done out of a whole week. And this brings us to the last step in planning. Help, we're behind. Okay, so your level of panic on this depends on how far behind your plan are you. And this again depends on whether you need to send tests to your school or not. If you don't have tests to send, just homeschool year round, going at your kid's pace. Nothing terrible will happen. If you have tests to send and a certain time frame to finish your year, recheck the deadlines you set at the beginning. If you work a little extra, you will make it in time for the end of the year or of the semester. For disastrously behind, <laughs> ditch the electives, recheck your plan and choices and shave off anything that's not essential for a while. Use that extra time to see if you can catch up. Since Amazon doesn't allow me to add tabs or stickers to my planners, I thought to offer these for free to anyone that subscribed to my newsletter. You can find these and more in my resource library. You need to subscribe and you will get a password giving you access to everything I created. I really wanted to make this planner an easy to use tool for kids and parents alike. So I created a lot of coordinating printables for them. Fun stickers. I created these for kids to stick to mark events in their month at a glance sections. I made some for appointments, doctor appointments, a gift for birthdays, a heart and a star for whatever else they want to mark down. And of course, a little test sticker if they want to know when tests are coming along in their curricula. Monthly tabs. I really love tabs and while you can use plastic sticky tabs to mark your months, this is so much better. You can choose from dated or undated tabs and I even left a few blank tabs for you to mark other sections in your planner if you need to. Monthly names and dates. These are great for undated planners and I even added numbered stickers that you can use to personalize the planner any way you need to. Subject names. I know it can be daunting writing down the name of your chosen subjects again and again. That's why I created these. And lastly, there's a bookmark to mark every day kids are left at. You can print all these on sticker paper. I used metallic, which is thicker sticker paper, to print the monthly tabs because they need to be sturdier. But the rest of them can be printed on regular sticker paper. I also printed the bookmark on magnetic printable paper so we can move it along as we need to but you can also print it on cardstock and glue some magnetic strip on it to mark your spot I also like to use these things to personalize our planner pilot friction erasable pens these are amazing no more correction tape I can simply erase them if I make any mistake and with planning there are always things that need to be moved around and erased these saved my sanity. I chose all colors because I like to color code, using one color per subject to keep things organized. Washi tape and washi tape sticker dots. These are fully optional, but I like using them. I use the dots to mark our school start, mid, and end dates. I used washi tape to mark notes. Post-its. These are my favorites because they can be moved anywhere and they come in so many designs. This is our current system of notes and we love it. I am extremely happy with how these turned out. We absolutely love our new planner. Flexible. I made these planners very easy to adapt to whatever your needs are. From covering 14 months to the undated version, these are molding to your homeschooling style. I also love that they are easy to personalize. My son chose a moon planner and the black and white images inside can be colored. He had fun coloring his with glittery pens. You can color the moon planner, the cat's planner, 
and the dog's planner. Affordable. I wanted to make these accessible to as many people as I could. That's why they are being sold all over the world through Amazon. Simple. I really wished for a simple checkbox journal type of planner for my son this year. I wanted it to be easy for him to use and not get overwhelmed by the many options or features. That's why these planners are pretty straightforward. Kids will find it easy to keep track of their work or follow a set plan. Easy to use. The sections in these planner are pretty self-explanatory. And aside the beginning planning section that parents would fill up, these planners should be fairly easy to use by second graders and up. I love how my son feels a sense of importance by owning his own planner. I really think teaching kids the importance of planning and organizing their lives is an amazing skill to have. Through planning for them, letting them see how planning works, experience the effectiveness and benefits of planning, they will grow with healthy habits of prioritizing, tracking and planning their work. A student planner, like my learning plan, is an amazing tool that empowers kids to take learning into their own hands, driving them one step closer to independence and responsibility. A proper planning system will lessen procrastination and anxiety while boosting self-esteem at seeing things getting done. Do you use planners for kids in your homeschool? Let me know in the comments. I would love to chat. I hope this video has been useful. Thank you for watching till the end. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to help me grow this channel. Until next time, stay curious.